Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Peter Llewellyn. I run the services at medcomsnetworking.com. So information services, resources, activities for people who work in and around medical communications, medical education, medical publishing, the associated businesses uh, across the world. Um, we do lots of different sorts of activities. So go to medcomsnetworking.com and have a look. Um, we do generate a lot of video content through webinars and such like. You'll find a lot of uh, videos about 500 or so over at Network Pharma TV about all aspects of Medcom's work now. So there's a good resource there. Uh, and specifically, um, we do quite a lot to try and provide information to people who are trying to understand the business a bit better. Maybe they want a job as a medical writer, account manager, editor, or associated roles. And um, if you go to firstmedcomsjob.com, you'll find all sorts of information there. So uh, I'm having a bit of fun at the moment talking to people in different roles across the business. Um, and um, just for the next 10 minutes, so we're going to have a chat. Anna Maria, thank you very much for joining us. Just tell us, start by just saying who you are and where you are. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Anna Maria. I'm originally from Bulgaria and currently I'm based uh, in the UK in Manchester. And And what company are you working with? So I'm working at Amiculum at the events team, which is a small uh, team of professionals, and we um, cover anything related with uh, virtual needs or hybrid uh, event needs. Uh, and even if our team is small, uh, we are covering the whole world because we are based uh, in different locations. Okay, so just 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 paint a little bit of a picture about Amiculum. There's a family of. 18 agencies or something like that, uh, 11 agencies, I think it's in, yes. in the family of Amiculum, um, some of which specialise quite clearly in, in certain areas, some of which are a bit more full service. But you work, as I understand it, in the events team that sort of supports everybody, is that right? Just just tell us a little bit about it. How big is it? Where around the world is it? And how do you work with those different agencies within the family as well? Yes, so Amiculum is a family um, of agencies all working in medical communications and they're all specializing um, in different areas of um, medical expertise. All of them are specializing in rare disease um, areas. Uh, so my team um, is not a part of a specific uh, agencies. Uh, our service um, can be accessed by anyone from uh, the agencies who uh, is organizing or need support uh, with a virtual meeting or with a hybrid uh, event or with any um, logistics related to, to that. Also including uh, recordings uh, and video edits. So anything related uh, with that, we can, um, we can help Amiculum. Okay, okay. So let's go back. What I'm interested in these conversations is the personal journey. Yeah. So let's go back to uh, think back to when you were at uni, what were you doing? And, and basically take us through the journey into 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 Amiculum and the Medcoms world. Yes. So my journey, um, as I think with everyone with uh, Medcoms is quite um, interesting and unique, uh, because I don't think Medcoms uh, is an, as an industry is something that everyone is familiar with. Uh, usually, you know about Medcoms if you already know someone who, who works there and kind of uh, gets you through what's involved uh, in Medcoms. Um, so my um, journey started back at uni uh, as I was studying my master's here at Manchester uh, doing an events, um, international events management. Uh, and we had this networking event with lots of um, um, great events professionals here in Manchester. And that's where I met uh, a few event professionals from uh, the world of Medcoms. So then I was very uh, intrigued and interested to find out more about uh, the world of Medcoms. I was already uh, interested in uh, corporate events, but then um, the idea of being part of something bigger, which for me, Medcoms is part of something um, bigger, even though I'm not a scientist, I still feel like I'm helping um, people in a way with my set of skills. So right. that's why I, I want, wanted to really focus um, my career um, to start in, in Medcoms. Um, so that was already my focus when I was studying. Uh, then I started applying for various jobs. I, I think in the beginning, not even um, completely re related with events. I think the first one was delegate management, which still is kind of related. Uh, but then this was um, at the beginning of 2020. And we uh, all know what happened at the beginning of 2020, and especially in March. 
2020 when everything uh, shut down. And I mm -hmm. found myself, you know, soon to graduate from an events uh, master's degree uh, when uh, no events were happening. So that was a great feeling at the beginning. Great timing, yeah. <laughs> great timing. Uh, luckily, you know, I already had uh, done my experience with lots of volunteering. So I was on the route to um, um, find something related with um, uh, events. So what happened was uh, while I was um, completing my dissertation, I was uh, looking for jobs because I knew I wanted to do um, some types of events. And actually, Medcoms was um, not only my first choice, but it happened that it was my only choice uh, because medical events, they didn't stop. You know, they, they had to happen. Doctors had to meet um, and discuss progress or anything that was um, happening in the pipelines. So um, this is how I actually um, found uh, amiculum and uh, at that time they uh, of course from from their side they were starting um, to, to have an influx of um, requests for virtue events but they didn't have um, enough um, team members to cover that so that's when they uh, created the events team that's the name of my team and I was um, yeah the founding member of, of that right. team um, so my role evolved quite a bit. So Miklum is very um, unique in a way that we don't have a set job titles, even though we can describe our role. Um, there is no um, particular job title, which actually means that you can have a lot of hats on you and you can discover what you like, what you don't like, and amend the role based on your interests, which I think it's re really great. So for example, my role started as virtual events technician, which was supposed to be very tech focused, you know, um, exactly as we do now, we have a meeting on Zoom, I had to make sure that people are connected, don't have technical issues. But in those last two and a half years, my role progressed to be digital and hybrid events project manager slash logistics specialist slash video editor. So quite a few things um, can happen and are happening. Um, within my role and within Amiculum. Uh, and that's uh, that's why I really like my role and Amiculum as a whole. And I would like to continue my career uh, in Medcoms. Okay, okay. I think you said you you started that team as it were, um, or the founding member of that team. And you've now got, is it four of you? I think you said yeah. spread around the world. So you've got somebody over in Singapore, was that right? So. Yes, we have a team member based in Singapore uh, and we're, working very closely uh, with one of the agencies in, within Amiculum, Delta Kien, who um, have a lot of uh, virtual events happening. So we have a colleague based in Chicago in the US. Right. So as you can see, we can cover um, all time zones, which is great because if we are having a tight deadline, uh, my colleague can work in my morning in Singapore, hand that over to me, and I can hand that over to my colleague in the US. So it's a very quick um, turnaround. And the way we work is um, very collaborative. Uh, everyone knows what the other person uh, within the team uh, is doing. So we are able to, to pick up uh, if something um, is needed. So it's very collaborative environment as a whole. And Amiculum works uh, that way in general, I think. Okay. And it's interesting just picking up on some of the things you said. I mean, you haven't got the the sort of the, the life sciences background sort of thing. And there's a sort of a, I think probably a lot of people looking at Medcoms assumes everybody has a life sciences background, does it? Um, and maybe you do need that, well, you do need that as a writer, maybe you need it as account management and so on. But I think one of the important points that we're trying to um, convey to people is by talking to, the, to you in different roles, that there are different roles. Um, and some of those roles don't need that life science background. Um, but I guess, again, I think you said, uh, I think I'm only just saying what you said, that you have an interest in and a desire to support healthcare patients and so on. So it plays to that side of it. Um, so, but it's just it's just interesting that the 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 opportunities are there for people outside of writing and account management, which is an important message to get out there. Um, just out of interest, I mean, this has been a bit of an amazing couple of years, two three years 
in medcoms generally, but particularly on the event side. So um, you've talked about the fact that you came in and it was very virtual, now it's hybrid sort of thing. Just just out of interest, just just a few words. How do you see things developing? How do you, you know, do you, how are healthcare professionals responding to different sorts of meetings and so on? Do, do, what are people's attitudes to meeting at the moment? I just find it interesting. I know it's changing probably and you know we'll need to wait and see what's happening in a few years time sort of thing but as you sit there at the moment how are people responding to different sorts of meeting formats Do you see what i mean yes so um you know i think we all all know the word zoom fatigue by now mm. um it's been quite spread around and it's quite understandable that people um want to get away from from having meetings um, on Zoom, which is quite understandable, but there is um, still quite a bit of benefits to have um, mm. a virtual meeting uh, or a virtual element having um, within your um, working life. So the trends that we're um, seeing actually, especially with the healthcare, healthcare professionals, um, is that there is a want um, to meet in person. Everyone is excited to uh, to meet in person, to have these casual conversations um, after a long meeting, um, which again is the benefit of having a, an in-person uh, meeting. So we see a lot of um, requests uh, uniquely for face-to-face -face meetings. However, the interesting thing is that when uh, the date approaches, uh, we are getting a uh, other requests saying that can you please help organize mm -hmm. a hybrid mm -hmm. meeting or a hybrid element as half of the advisors um have different reasons that they just yeah. cannot attend and these reasons uh vary from um, there might be another covid outbreak where they live or they might be inconvenient in some other way or simply they want to save the time um, to travel, to attend their uh, clinic, for example, and join for a few hours, share their opinion, and disconnect. And that's everything. So there are different reasons why people wouldn't want to travel. And we see a mix uh, of that, which then implies that we um, are really pushing everyone to plan for a hybrid element from the start, not wait um, for the need to have one. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think we are suggesting to every one of our clients to consider having a hybrid element and uh, suggest that to people rather than uh, wait for them to ask or say, I'm sorry, but I cannot attend. And then we say, okay, what about then? I, I, I can understand that entirely. And as, as, um, as someone who organizes meetings, I mean, or, or, and talks to a lot of people who organize meetings, you know, there is that desire among some people to have the face-to-face -face and you want to do that and you pursue it and then you get to that certain point and it's quite late on in the day when you realize that your key speakers aren't wanting to or can't travel or so and, and it's, it's so much more difficult at that stage to go oh well, you know it's not quite as simple as just oh well let's just turn a laptop on and turn it around and film it sort of thing you know there's actually quite a lot of work involved in doing it properly so i find all that absolutely fascinating on a practical level i, I find it fascinating but just out of interest i guess part of your role presumably is because uh, one of the things i find bewildering is how many platforms there are how many new solutions there are the technology is moving very very quickly um and and and, and there's there's just new ways of doing things just coming out all the time but part of your role presumably is, is to is to try and keep up with that and 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 and, and tap into the, the good developments that are happening yeah exactly so another aspect of my role is to uh to do the research and innovation uh part right. of our industry really and there are um, so many platforms uh, out there wraparound platforms uh, which are different than zoom in the way that you can store a lot more information on them so they're more suitable let's say for a series uh, of meetings where you can have everything stored into one place rather than sending different links uh, you can have different meeting materials you can have gamification leaderboards uh, so something for a larger um, meetings or a series of scheduled events or training sessions I think um, this is great so we are seeing um, a movement towards you know migrating from Zoom and WebEx and Teams to something a bit more um, sophisticated let's say in terms of technology and again the the main goal 
is to to meet the client's expectations. So if that's if this is for them to uh, their uh, advisors to learn something, then we with those platforms uh, we can have the necessary analytics tracking systems to ensure that this is happening and that we can track that. So I think the main uh, thing for clients at the moment is analytics um, to see mm. what is working, um, who is attending what, at what time of the session is the most you know engaged with uh, these kinds of things. So in terms of platforms and innovation, I would say that's the that's the main thing: analytics and and engagement. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, and again, it's, uh, you can't help but think back to the old days. You know, a meeting meant bringing people into a room and you'd measure it based on how many of the seats were filled sort of thing <laughs> was it a full room or not if it wasn't it didn't work if it did it was and uh, whereas these days the analytics side of these virtual meetings is, is is very sophisticated and it's amazing what you can measure and how how useful that can be um understanding behavior and understanding what people are really getting out of a meeting and how to work it to everyone's advantage i think it's absolutely fascinating so look we could probably talk for much longer i should i should draw a line there because we're running out of time but um it's absolutely great talking to you and, and thank you so much for joining me anna maria um and 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 talk about a different sort of role because as i say a lot of the, of the time i'm talking to writers or account managers it was i was very keen to talk to somebody a little bit different um i'm delighted it's worked out so well for you i can imagine what you must have thought in march 2020 or whatever it was when when it all seemed like you know whoops i've gone down the wrong road but it's great that it's worked out really well um and it's it, it, again it's just a good message to put out there that medcoms is is doing some great work in and around eventing type activity um, and there's loads of opportunities for people um to get involved in that and the technology is absolutely fantastic so thank you very much um, I, I know i can say for you if you don't mind that um everyone uh please do reach out to you linkedin is the easy way to do it um part of the point of these um exercises is to encourage people to talk to each other um so please uh, reach out to you on linkedin anyone that's listening if i can help um please uh, reach out to me or go to medcomsnetworking.com and see what's going on but for today i just like to say a big thank you to Anne marie um give us a little wave and we'll say goodbye thank you very much bye bye <laughs>